Hello, in this video, we are going to talk about alcohol and cancer risk. A clear guide for everyone. It's based on comprehensive scientific review by the Dietary Guidelines Advisory Committee. Why this matters to you? This guide explains the connection between drinking alcohol and your risk of getting cancer. The information comes from a major review of the best available science prepared to advise the US government on its official health guidelines. For decades, the message around alcohol was often confusing, sometimes highlighting potential heart benefits. However, the scientific understanding of alcohol's role in causing cancer has become much clearer. This document cuts through the confusion to give you the facts you need to make informed choices about your health. The most important takeaways. Number one, alcohol is a carcinogen. It is classified as a group one carcinogen by the World Health Organization. This means it is, a known, to, it is known to cause cancer in humans, placing it in the same category as tobacco smoke and asbestos. Number two, there is no risk-free level. Drinking any amount of alcohol increases your risk for some cancers. The more you drink, the higher your risk. Third, breast cancer link is strongest. The evidence is most conclusive for breast cancer. Even small amounts of regular drinking can raise a women's risk. Fourth, it is about cumulative exposure. Your risk is influenced by how much you drink on average over time. Consistent, moderate drinking poses a greater risk than occasional red drinking. Your choice matters. Being informed allows you to make decisions that can help manage your cancer risk. For many cancers, the less you drink, the more you lower your risk. We are going to elaborate more on it. Please stay with us because this is going to help you and help your loved ones to be away from alcohol to prevent future cancer. How alcohol causes cancer? You don't need a science degree to understand the basics. When you consume an alcoholic drink, your body doesn't just process it like food. It treats it as a toxin and works to break it down immediately. This process creates harmful substances that can damage your body. The main culprit, acetaldehyde. You take a drink, like beer, wine, or liquor, your liver breaks the alcohol down into a toxic chemical called acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde is a known carcinogen. It damages your DNA the genetic code that tells your cells how to behave. When DNA is damaged, cells can mutate and to start to grow out of control, potentially forming a tumor. Think of it like this. Acetaldehyde causes spelling errors in your body's instruction manual. Too many errors and the instructions no longer make sense, leading to malfunction, like cancer. Other ways, also, Alcohol can increase the risk. 1. Hormone disruption. Alcohol can increase levels of hormones like estrogen. Higher lifetime exposure to estrogen is a known risk factor for breast cancer. 2. Nutrient absorption. It makes it harder for your body to absorb essential nutrients like folate, a B vitamin, which is crucial for healthy cell division and DNA repair. Third, it's a solvent for other toxins. Alcohol can act as a solvent, helping other harmful chemicals like those in tobacco penetrate the cells lining your mouth and throat more easily. Finally, oxidative stress. Processing alcohol generates reactive molecules that cause oxidative stress, which can damage cells and DNA. Which cancers are linked to alcohol? The scientific evidence is strongest for the cancers listed below. The level of risk depends on how much 
and how often you drink. Number one, breast cancer. The evidence, this is the most well-established link. Major global, health, major global health organizations agree the evidence is convincing or sufficient. The risk, the review find that women, the women who drink moderately have about a 10% higher risk of developing breast cancer compared to those who never drink. The risk increases linearly. Each additional standard drink per day increases risk by about 5 to 6%. Why? Alcohol raises blood estrogen levels and its breakdown product, acetaldehyde, can directly damage breast tissue cells. The second cancer is colorectal cancer, cancers of colon and rectum. The evidence, the link is strong, particularly for men and for those who drink on the higher end of the moderate range. The risk, the review concluded that among moderate drinkers, those who drink more have higher risk than those who drink less. Each additional drink per day was associated with higher hazard of cancer. Why? The lining of colon and rectum is directly exposed to high concentrations of acetaldehyde produced when gut bacteria break down alcohol. This can cause inflammation and DNA damage in these tissues. Next is cancers of the mouth, throat or pharynx, voice box or larynx and esophagus. The link is very strong, especially for people who both drink and smoke. Most early research focused on heavy drinkers, but evidence suggests risk begins at moderate levels. These are some of the cancers most strongly influenced by alcohol. Risk increases significantly with the amount of alcohol consumed. Why? The tissues in the mouth and throat have direct contact with the alcohol. Saliva can contain very high levels of acetaldehyde immediately after drinking. Alcohol also acts as a solvent helping tobacco carcinogens enter cells more easily. The combination of smoking and drinking multiplies the risk. It's worse than just adding the two risks together. Liver cancer. While alcohol is a major cause of liver cancer, the review, this review, is focused on moderate intake. The strong link to liver cancer is primarily with heavy long-term drinking, typically three or more drinks per day, which causes cirrhosis, that is scarring of the liver. Cirrhosis is a major risk factor for liver cancer. Therefore, liver cancer was not the primary focus of this moderate drinking review. Scientists are also studying potential links between alcohol and other cancers such as stomach, pancreas, and prostate. While there are some signals, the, kind, the current evidence is not yet strong enough to say definitely that moderate drinking causes these cancers. More research is needed. Okay, next is understanding moderate drinking and your risk. What is a standard drink? Many people pour more than a standard drink. In the United States, a standard drink contains about 14 grams of pure alcohol. This equals 12 ounces of regular beer of 5% alcohol, 5 ounces of wine of 12% alcohol, 1.5 ounces of distal spritz like vodka, whiskey, gin of 40% alcohol. What does moderate mean? The US dietary guidelines define moderate drinking as for women up to one drink per day, for men up to two drinks per day. This definition was created to provide a clear upper limit for those who choose to drink. It's not a recommended starting point. The cancer risk review shows that the risk begins at any level above zero and increases with each drink. There are four different patterns. One, I don't drink lowest risk. Second, I, I have one drink three times a week, some increased risk. Third, I have one drink every day, higher risk than the occasional drinker. 
Fourth, I have two plus drinks every day, significantly higher risk. The dose response relationship. This is a key concept. For cancer, the relationship is generally linear, not J-shaped. This means risk goes up steadily with the amount consumed. There is no protective sweet spot. How personal factors influence your risk? Your risk isn't just about the alcohol itself. Other factors play a role. Number one, genetics. ALDH2 gene. Some people, particularly of East Asian descent, carry a gene variant that makes them unable to break, break down acetaldehyde efficiently. This causes acetaldehyde to build up in their blood after drinking, leading to facial flushing or blushing, nausea, and a rapid heartbeat. For these individuals, the cancer risk from alcohol is much higher even at very low levels of consumption because their bodies are exposed to more of the toxic carcinogen for a longer time. Lifestyle interactions. Smoking. This is the biggest one. Alcohol and tobacco together are a devastating combination. They synergize, meaning your risk for oral, throat, and esophageal cancer is far greater than just adding the two risks, two risks together. Diet. The diet lacking in fruits and vegetables means you might miss out on a protective antioxidants and nutrients like folate, which can help counteract some of the DNA damage caused by alcohol. Overall health. Underlying conditions, especially those affecting the liver, can change how your body processes alcohol and its associated risks. History of the guidelines and why the message has changed over time. The official advice on alcohol has evolved as the science has improved. We are going to look at three dietary guidelines published in 2010, 2015 and 2020. In 2010 noted the moderate alcohol intake is associate, associated with increased risk of breast cancer, meaning the, uh, it acknowledged the link for the first time but cautiously. 2015 stated that alcoholic drinks are associated with increased risk for certain cancers and found increased breast cancer risk even at moderate intakes. Meaning the language became stronger here and more direct about the risk. In 2020, the emerging evidence suggests that even drinking within the recommended limits may increase the overall risk of death from various causes such as from several types of cancer. This was a significant shift from previous two dietary guidelines. It clearly stated that the moderate drinking limits are not without risk. Why the change? One, better studies. Newer research has done a better job of separating never drinkers from former drinkers who may have quit due to health problems, which gives a clearer picture of alcohol's true effects. Long-term data. We now have decades of data from large studies following millions of people providing powerful evidence. Third, improved biological understanding. Scientists now have a much clearer picture of how alcohol case causes cancer, the role of acetaldehyde and DNA damage. Putting it all together, the scientific consensus is clear. Alcohol consumption is a modifiable risk factor for several major cancers. The decision to drink alcohol is a personal one, but it should be an informed decision made with an understanding of the potential consequences. A practical guide. If you don't drink, don't start. There is no health reason to begin drinking alcohol to prevent any disease. Any potential heart benefits are outweighed by the cancer risk for most people and can be achieved through safer means like diet and exercise. If you do drink, practice mindful reduction. Follow the guidelines. Do not exceed the moderate drinking limits like one drink per day for women, two for men. Less is better. Within the guidelines, 
less is always better for reducing cancer risk. Consider having several alcohol free days each week. Measure your drink. Pour standard sized drinks to keep track of your actual intake. Never drink and smoke. The combined risk is extremely high. Talk to your doctor. Discuss your alcohol use openly at your next checkup. Ask about your personal care cancer risk based on your family history, lifestyle, and other factors. Focus on overall health. Don't smoke. Eat a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Maintain a healthy weight. Get regular physical activity. These positive steps can help improve your overall health and potentially mitigate some risk. Final message, knowledge is power. Understanding the link between alcohol and cancer empowers you to make choices that are right for your health and your life. The goal is not to create fear, but to provide clarity so you can take control of your well-being. Thanks for watching. Please share this video with others. Our aim is to promote better health to everyone in the planet. See you in the next video. Thanks again.